Hi, this is John from Creative Tap. Um, now, in this uh, video, we're going to be discussing the hypodermic needle theory and what exactly that is. So, before we discuss the actual theory, I just want to kind of get our heads around what a hypodermic needle is. Uh, now, a hypodermic needle is essentially like a medical needle which is used to inject a patient with um, some antibodies or um, well, anything really, anything that a patient needs, they inject them with. So, how does this t how does this transpire into um, an audience theory? Well, it's a way of understanding the passive audience theory. If you don't know the difference between passive and active audiences, I suggest you check that video out. The link will be the below in the description, and then you can pop back to this. Now, um, basically, we've got this hypodermic needle kind of analogy on our, in our heads, and essentially, this is a theory based on um, that audiences are like kind of injected with with information. They they watch something on TV that they it's in their heads almost like this injected into their brains now this theory has been kind of like you know knocked down a couple of times it, it is it is still relevant um, for passive audience members so an example of the hypodermic needle theory um, we're going to discuss one from the 1930s which is a really interesting one and we're, but first of all we're going to kind of look at it in a more kind of um, modern modern aspect now there's this whole argument on whether games um, kind of make people violent and I've got my own views on this I don't think personally if you play Call of Duty it's gonna mean that you're gonna go and start shooting shooting people uh, I think that's quite ridiculous however um, there's been some articles um, with which I'll get up on the screen for you now there was an article about a French terrorist who um, shot a load of people unfortunately and in a newspaper headline that I found his wife said that he was playing Call of Duty for a long long time days upon days before actually committing this crime and almost her excuse of it was he'd been playing this game and almost um, given this sort of living this life in the computer game and then this is why he went out and did it and that's a, a, a very extreme example of, of the hypodermic needle theory how he would have I'm not saying this is the reason and I don't think it's an excuse at all, personally. Um, but she was kind of almost justifying it with the usage of this game, which ties into the hypodermic needle theory of being injected with this information, okay? Um, and that was her reasoning for it. But another interesting aspect of looking at this is from Orson Welles' War of the Worlds in, in the 1930s. So, in the 1930s, a real-life um, broadcast um, on the radio was, uh, well, broadcast over the airwaves um, about uh, a alien invasion, these people from Mars coming to invade the world. And loads of people believed this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to play the um, news broadcast for you. We now return you to Carl Phillips at Grover's Mill. Ladies and gentlemen, am I on? Ladies and gentlemen... Ladies and gentlemen, here I am, back of a stone wall that adjoins Mr. Wilmer's garden. From here, I get a sweep of the whole scene. I'll give you every detail as long as I can talk and as long as I can see. The more state police have arrived. They're drawing up a cordon in front of the pit. About 30 of them. No need to push the crowd back now. They're willing to keep their distance. The captain's conferring with someone. Can't quite see who. Oh, yes, I believe it's Professor Pearson. Yes, it is. Now, now they've parted and the professor moves around one side... Studying the object while the captain and two policemen advance with something in their hands. I can see it now. It's a white handkerchief tied to a pole. Flag of truce. If those creatures know what that means, what anything means. Wait a minute. Something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. What's that? There's a jet of flame springing from the mirror and it leaps right at the advancing men. It strikes them head on. Lord, they're turning into flames. Ah! Now the whole field's caught up by the woods. The bars, the, the gas tank, tanks of the automobiles are spreading everywhere. It's coming this way now, about 20 yards to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. So, after hearing that, back in the 1930s, there was a lot of widespread panic because people, people literally absorbed this information and believed it to be true. Um, a more recent version of this would have been the Millennium Bug in the year 2K. Uh, there was a lot of hype about computers um, that were going to crash and almost take over the world, sort of minority report style. And 
people believe this because when when the clock changed from 1999, sorry, the date changed from 1999 to 2000, people just had it in their heads um, that this was going to be the end of the world, and a lot of people were believing this and there was loads of widespread panic. My father used to work for a telecommunications company and they had so many um, things in place just in case this, this had happened. Um, so it, it was basically loads of widespread panic. The same kind of thing happened when the media covered the Mayan prophecy of the end of the world in 2012. Uh, I was a bit younger then and I was a little bit, I was a little bit on the edge thinking, oh is this really gonna happen? But it's basically, if it's, if it's been in the media and you're kind of a passive audience member, it's that almost that analogy of somebody injecting you with this, this information and you're thinking, right, this is going to happen, or this is absolutely true. And it doesn't have to be all this kind of political news thing. It could be that you're a really big fan of, of like three celebrities. Let's say these three celebrities are stick thin models. It may be that your interpretation of this is, well, they're so popular, they've got loads of Instagram followers or Snapchat followers. If I want that, I, I've got to be the same. And so it can tie over into many things. It's, it's quite big in politics. Um, however, it, it can tie into even social media followings, you know, it can have negative aspects on a media consumer's body image. So um, that's the hypodermic needle theory. It's basically a passive audience model where people where it's a theory where people are literally injected with information like injected right into the brain and they almost take this as gospel they, ex they accept it um, so I hope you kind of pick some stuff up and learn some stuff in this video um, if you've got any questions leave a comment um, give us a like and a su subscribe because we've got loads of other content um, leave us a comment on what else you want to see and cheers for tuning in so hopefully see you in another video